Um, natural counter, but you know, with EG already having both of their cores committed, and the Timber Saw and the Sven already being picked, um, you know, picking it safe and knowing the mid-matchup against Timber is going to be favorable. And Swindles once again, starting out in the jungle. We saw this, um, we've seen this basically all throughout the qualifier. Swindles a very outspoken critic of the way that uh, Iron Talon has changed the game and the way it's really modified, the way offlane works, or more to the point, doesn't work. And, um, you know, he, he finally said, you know, we're going to just, I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to stop fighting it. I'm just going to play right. And he's turned out to be one of the most efficient junglers in particular on Bath that we've seen in a while. The, uh, I think he really learned his lesson early on, earlier on in this qualifier. I think yep. against FDL, he had five deaths in six minutes uh, as the offlaner just kept trying to make it work for, for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was a very hard slap in the face that, Woke Swindles up and it was like, okay, Iron Talon every game. If, if Universe is doing it, I can do it. If Universe <laughs> is doing it on Darkseer, one of the few offlaners that's supposed to always lane, uh, you know, if, if he's abandoning the lane to, to Iron Talon jungle, then why aren't you? Yep. You know, it, it's just so efficient. It, it's not worth the risk, essentially. Sad day, man. Sad day. I miss the old suicide yeah. lane. Oh. Approach Courier takes a beating uh, on the head, but. Nothing going to come of it. Early CS, we can see Sven's leading the way. Jug's right there with him. Timber's actually getting the better of mid, but just barely. I shouldn't say just barely. It's actually about like 20% or so. 19 to 15 of Medusa, so favorable lane there. So we're three and a half minutes in. Things have settled down, and the dust has settled as well. What do you think of the laning phase and how it's going to play out over the next, say, seven minutes here, Cap? Um, well, a couple things. I really like the poor man shield and the, and the quelling blade choice of the timber saw. It's really helping out at CS, as you pointed out. He's got a good lead, and a big part of that is uh, very similar to Zeus, actually. Uh, both these heroes were actually harmed in their mid lane by the, the range creep, having uh, such a heavy experience impact in the lane. Right. And you can see every single time he goes for this Mystic Snake, he brings the range creep low, and Timbersaw goes for the deny, and that's why the CS differential is so big. Um, and it's good. It really impacts their experience, too. If you notice, they're actually even on experience, but they've got a whole wave here to Timbersaw's favor. Radiant and Talon let's not forget that attack. Limp is also part of some early kills that got him a jump in experience as well. So right. this is this is something that uh, is is actually having an active uh, impact in the lane. But you're still being able to run a Deuce emit, and that is just nice to be able to say, right, that Deuce is going to be doing all right and mid is going to be farming. It's a tough hero to gank, first of all. I mean, Lion and Ventral Spirit don't actually have a job here. <laughs> <Right>. They're, they're <laughs> putting pressure on bottom lane because now there's an Earth Spirit Bat Rider, but otherwise, like, what do you do? You, you can't really gank the, the Deusa very well because Timbersaw is not a, a hero that like allows you to gank for him. Like once he hits level six, there's something. But as he hits level six, then Dusa might have stone gates at that point. Right. So again, it's just like once you get that pro for the timber saw, there's a con of facing a, du a Dusa with stone gates. I was just kind of thinking about that too. Is you know, EG's got a fairly well-rounded lineup. Good at team five. Pretty good late game. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Complexity has, I think, a sneaky, sneaky, deceptive, or sneaky defensive lineup. There was on the now. They have offensive potential, and they certainly have the ability to go late, and they have the ability to gank around. I mean, any lineup with a bad right nerve spirit is going to be able to carve the map up uh, throughout all, most phases of the game. But in terms of actually trying to accomplish anything and trying to take an objective or take a fight on your own terms, unless you just c catch complexity completely asleep at the wheel, they have so many answers to bail out not just individual heroes, but their entire team out of trouble. And they have the ability to reach in very quickly. Now they're going to go right on Sumail. There's a kickback into range of the tower. Fairy Fire will be consumed. Here comes Hanskin. We'll get off the stun, and that's going to catch a couple. There's the magic miss from the high ground, though. Sumail does manage to make it away. Limp able to make it away as well. Just limp his way away. And Z Freak makes it back to the safety and succor of his own tower, but not before Chessie was required to TP mid to keep things stable. In the meantime, there's a hex on the swindles. Follow up with the Earth Spike. Fear's going to throw the Storm Hammer as well. He went straight God Strength. Can they get him? And yes, the Timber's there with a double kill for Sue Mail. So that's going to get EG right back in the thick of things, four to five. I'm not sure why Complexity chose to try and gank a, a Timber Saw like that. There was even. Uh, Z Free trying to do it earlier when he did that roll in and went for the courier and that sort of stuff. Like, even though you caught some mail without mana, it doesn't matter. The, the hero, like, the, the Oracle kind of made it close just because the nukes of the Oracle are, are, uh, are rather absurd um, compared to most other supports. They're not able to, to usually output that kind of damage, but 
it, it's still just a bad idea, because especially combined with the fact that evil geniuses have roaming supports of their own. In fact, if anything, there's a lot more pressure on EG to make get something done in the mid lane anyway. So it was just kind of like a, a risky maneuver. If they got the kill on Sumail, that would have been huge. Slow down the timber saw, fantastic stuff, but uh, it, it uh, very clearly turned against them, losing the Dusa like that. I thought she was going to live just because she got so much mana back from the Mystic Snake, but mm -hmm. uh, I think just a Chakram took her out in, in the river. Samael was able to get that, uh, that double Radiant's kill. Right back in. And as you said, man, just a great turn of events for UG, getting themselves back into a decent position. We can see overall that has actually took them. I mean, they were they were leading a bit in efficiency. It was kind of back and forth for the first six minutes, but certainly the biggest attack. lead of the game. Marginal, though, it may be now in favor of Poison Blue, thanks to that sequence beginning there and then stretching down into bottom lane with the rotation from Sumail. And I'm, you know, this is going to continue to be a point that I really want to watch: is how do they get mileage out of Peter and Zai? And you know, you were touching on this. And we, you know, it's it's really easy to be like, oh, they, they, you know, we see how they do it. They get stunts. Yeah, that that works in the right circumstances. That's Odyssey Mail. Speaking of being a bit out of position. Um, yeah, All right. they just deleted Timber Saw from the game. Yeah, let, let's punish Sumail. Like Grant and I were having this conversation. Um, there, there is different styles of players. We 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 praise players who are like um, who are very stable, and then we. Uh, we praise the playmakers like Samael. And the thing is, is that those are those are two different play styles. Yep. And they have their pros and cons. Samael's playmaking, you know, style has its downside where he will make a play like that, where he yes. goes past way past the tier one tower in a place right. so he knows he's gonna get punished. And no uh, no successful rotation there at the top lane. But like that that should but that's what Samael right. does. Samael right. can go really big sometimes by playing or like very hyper aggressive and when he succeeds he can single handedly You can't have the angry. highlight reel without the blooper reel. Yeah, exactly. So unfortunately like that was one of those scenarios where he tries to go big and complexity do punish him. Th but that's also the nature of Dusa. He should know that this matchup like the the Dusa is not a hero just like complexity trying to gank the timber saw. Right. Like these are almost dead lanes in a way. That they're these heroes are so tanky. Speaking of going deep Zumail no, thought about continuing to pursue and now he's just gonna cut creeps looks yeah. like yeah with the iron show no help coming, and this top tier one should be EGs for the taking. In the meantime, though, Dusa just continues to farm. We can see some counter warding going on. The Sphere really wants to stack Dyer's this camp, has his Helm of the Dominator up, attack. so wanted to get the stacks rolling. Radiance the Earth Spirit's almost level six. Attack. That's actually not too bad for him coming up on 10 minutes. Dyer's yeah, he, they're both kind of giving their supports uh, solo lane so they can get the ultimate rolling in. Could have attempted a kick from E Freak. Even conserved his boulder there, using the one that was already in lane. But otherwise, kind of same story on both sides. Evil geniuses are going to be the ones who uh, will. I don't know. It, it, the timing is kind of weird because Juggernaut comes online faster than the Sven. Sven is naturally more of a farming hero because he's able to uh, abuse that cleave and farm up ancients. So I think Complexity are the ones who need to be aggressive with the blink on Batrider and the Juggernaut just being a little bit faster of a tempo hero than Sven. They need to be, be aggressive. They need to try and take control of the map. If they can get a like successful gank and take this tier one tower away, and that'll really limit the hold of Evil Geniuses over this Ancient stack. Um, if they could do something like that, that would be a huge win for the first 20 minutes of the game. Right. Uh, and then Evil Geniuses are going to hit a timing around 30, 35, I think, where they start getting uh, exceptionally strong. So they're going to try to get there a little quicker. Oh, nice. Yep, very quick reaction from Chessie. And uh, that actually highlights a point that I was uh, just going to bring up, which is EG is extremely reliant on Blink Dagger. And, you know, speaking of Blink, we see one kind of on the map. But in terms of initiation, they basically got the Timber who can go in and be a meat shield, and that's fine. But EG's really not going to feel as threatening as their lineup would dictate until we see at least one Blink Dagger on Zai. It would help a lot to have another one on Sfin, perhaps. Yeah. And maybe one on Darkseed, even, um, as you get through the... As you get past, like, Mechanism, speaking of, Mechanism yeah. comes out now. Whereas Complexity, no matter what, is going to have the Earth Spirit to get in and really kick things off. And once the Batrider has his own now, it's going to be very difficult for them to not have this happen, which is, not, you know, it's tough to say he's out of position when he's standing under his own tier one. But, you know, things happen whenever you have an Earth Spirit and a bat, both initiating from different angles. Well, that's awkward. Zai actually getting pushed out of the way. That's silence. Ooh. But they'll commit the Omni Slash. I like that play from Chessy. Always willing to use it to get the guaranteed kill, like on Timbersaw earlier uh, this time. 
on design to get the extra pickup. And this is what I really want to see. The smoke gank, they wrap through the jungle, they gank mid, they're going to take this tier one tower, and then they're going to try and control the ancients uh, a bit more. They can't take it away from EG because Dusa is very slow at it. You'd obviously be at a, a very precipitous location. <laughs> the EG side of things. Spun but the hell out of that creep. Yeah, he really did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I think this is like strategically very sound from complexity. Like right. they're making very clear plays. Another thing, oh, another reason why I think they're looking better. I'm not sure about their their game versus EG. I heard they just want them, but yep. I think they look a lot better pushing high ground than they used yes. to. Yes, yes, that was a big part of it too. Patience. Just large, by and large, their patience seems to have gone through the roof. Instead of hanging around and, and being willing to take what is a decent opportunity, they wait for good opportunities, or they just continue to siege. They yeah. have no problem just slow sieging and, you know, making good decisions, especially when you have an Aegis. Like, if you have a ranged hero and an Aegis, just peck away from the low ground, man. You don't have to, to burst a, a, a tower down. If you're if you're far enough ahead to have them pinned inside their own base like that, stay ahead. Just get more ahead. You don't have to win at that precise moment. And that seems to have clicked. And they're just continuing to look good, man. And EG on the bad end of the stick so far as that improvement goes. Trailing now 8-4. I think in, in some ways, like, I kind of criticized them. I almost thought they were being too slow. Um, but it, at the same time, that says a lot of confidence about themselves, right? That I think they're changing that. That they're saying, you know, let, let, let's play it slow enough that we're forcing the enemy team to make mistakes. And I think Complexity oftentimes looked at their matchup as them being the underdog. So therefore, if they hit their peak period of time, they had to play out and they couldn't play slow because that would mean, playing slow means you're trying to play enemy, you know, making mistakes. Swindles is very likely to die here unless the Oracle could save him, but with the finger of death, there's just a He just got, got out there a bit, got caught by a hex and Peter happened to be hiding in the trees as well. So good pick from EG. Let's see if they can do something with a tier one bomb. That's unfortunate because the the rest of Complexity were just, you know, uh, they made a short little pit stop there to catch up with Limp and heal him up because he had just been farming Ancients with uh, double damage. But they were going to go on this bottom lane. Now they don't have the Batrider, so they don't have the guaranteed initiation. And Z-Freak just a bit slow to stop Zai as he picked Ooh. up his fresh blink. Thorhammer got two. Let's see if we won the game. They do. There's the wall. No back and they don't need it. Z-Freak's in a lot of trouble. And in comes Sumail. Swooping through like Batman through the back. And now... Jesse forced to blow the Omni Slash, got nothing out of it. Mech was already on point. Fear looking for another target. They're just going to pursue Jesse down towards the shop. And they'll have no problem chasing him down. In the meantime, fight rages on, and Oracle should end up dying the damage. One would imagine. Swindle trying to turn around. Zai does get caught from behind. And no, oh, he actually got the, uh, had enough healing to keep himself alive. Ends up not as bad as it could have been for Complexity. However, EG going to bang down this tower, and it doesn't look like Complexity has anything to say about it. Yeah, it only, again, it all comes down to the fact that they were kind of like planning that, that rotation, I think, to swoop through that bottom lane, but Swindles gets caught before the rest of the team is ready to go. Swindles isn't uh, isn't there in that fight. That means they don't have the guaranteed initiation, so they try and go with the Earth Spirit instead, which kind of misses. Yep. They they miss their initiation. EG get the opportunity to be able to respond, turns against them, they've lost a Tier 1 tower, and all of a sudden, that great play, strategy-wise, the great play that Complexity made by smoking up, rotating through mid, taking that tier one tower and lessening the hold that EG had over the map, that advantage is now effectively gone. Because EG just won a, a fight and now I would imagine the gold is in their favor. Yep. And they the, have just drawn it back to even too. The control of the game is in their favor as well, for sure. So, so far as I'm in development, would you care to take a look at Sven? Curious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the Echo Saber and 1500 gold. So what are you thinking here? You think maybe a Blink's the right call, or do you go straight BKB? Uh, I think you... I think Armlet first. Armlet? Uh, I like it. I think Armlet is just too value. On uh, before you get the Blink Dagger, I think you get Blink Dagger after that. Fair. Um, I, I don't think you want to try and be overly aggressive um, with the blink dagger like if you pick it up too early and you don't you don't actually successfully connect with your your initiations um, from that point you could slow down your game as Sven uh, by quite a lot I think they they can afford to play a little bit more of a, a slower farming game right now complexity are going to be the ones looking for kills still trying to use that bat rider because it, it's such a such an advantage at this point mm -hmm. or it's supposed to be anyway and the juggernaut on the slash nope. to blink. 
Take fights and bully. Dyer's All right. I was actually, you had me Radiant's sold, man. I was on board. Um, I was going to say, and, you know, just to build on your point that now you know, moves, but nonetheless, you know, and they haven't needed it. I mean, he's been hitting his storm hammers. He's been getting involved. You know, it hasn't been a, an item that, there hasn't been a fight where I've been like, man, if only Spin had a point. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, that's the direction they decide to go. So we'll see how they put it to use. In the meantime, Complexity takes the tower. The aggressiveness could really pay out because they just got the, the Timber Saw, his Bloodstone. And they, what they, what they definitely need, they definitely need the blinks no matter what because you need fast ganks, you need fast initiations Dyer's when you're playing up against a Dusa because the attack. opportunity for countering with the Stone Gaze, this is why the heroes actually entered back into the meta is because we're seeing, uh, we're seeing the the meta transition into teams being tankier and tankier and the the fights being in, in not as fast because there's not spell casters there's not as many core spell casters so there's not as much opportunity for this fragile glass cannon state so fights are, are longer and because the fights are longer this gives an opportunity for counter initiation and dusa is one of the best counter initiators in the game because of the stone gaze just it stops the gank entirely yep. like you you just can't go further but this is an interesting sandwich well we're gonna see Z Freak caught and blown up. There's an Omni Slash trying to turn it around. Now Complexity on the run. Fear, there's gonna be just a one man vacuum in the wall, but it's on someone valuable. They got Chessie with it. And he's gonna be bailed out by the Oracle, at least for the moment. Buyback from the Earth Screen. He wants to get back in. Oh, Hanskin needs a lot of damage off of Sue Mail's Whirling Death. Trying to follow it up. Limp does end up dropping, and now Fear caught from behind with a boulder. Do they have the damage to follow? There's a Flame Break trying to make some space. And up to the north now. Swindles tried to TP away, thought better of it now. Very low. In the meantime, Universe tallies a double kill, and that's suddenly going to be a full five-man wipe with count him three kills for EG Universe. Welcome home indeed, young man. That was... Very well played. Evil Geniuses getting the sandwich coming in from behind. The fast initiation immediately making the whole entire fight uh, four versus five like that. That... That just destroyed them because they got the counter initiation. They even bought back on the Earth Spirit. They they got the counter initiation of the Stone Gates in, but there is some significant problems. Is while it did slow down the the fight, they couldn't actually capitalize very well. In fact, in some ways, the Stone Gates magic immunity played against them. I saw Hanskin use his purifying flames on one of the units, the the support potential Spirit, and obviously took no damage and even started <laughs> healing because of it. Right? They right. they don't actually have that much physical damage to take advantage to to take advantage of that status where they are magic immune but taking extra physical damage uh, all they have is the juggernaut on the slash so it ne it doesn't actually serve as an opportunity to get damage out it serves as like this um this place where it's like naga siren sleep where complexity get to reset the fight in a way and set up for the next round of abilities but the fight was chaotic enough and they are already at a disadvantage that they just didn't execute uh, very well, and I'm not sure how well they could have, to be honest, with the way that EG initiated. EG, rolling things up, my friend. And like you said, I, 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 I you said it best. It's what I'm seeing happen to Lexi in this game is what they did to EG last game. Swindles is going to just die in his own jungle. Because, yeah. Because Sumail. Um, just heard a storm hammer somewhere. Yep, limp. Eating a little bit of aggression. Beginning to see just how deadly things like Ion Shell can be whenever you have melee cores like a Timber Saw and a Spin just flying through the air, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the last time these two met up, again, just a couple of hours ago, um, when Complexity got the best of EG, it looked almost exactly like this except turned around. Complexity just coming in at good angles, making good decisions on when to engage, when not to engage, and more importantly, how to engage. And it looks like EG maybe not taking them as lightly as perhaps they did. Certainly not. Evil Genius is... They were looking for a pickoff here to make sure this tier 2 is going to be going down without a doubt. Complexity are not going to get picked off, and they may be able to provide the challenge here with the Batrider coming back up. EG, I think they would be smart to disengage. Now, it doesn't mean back away from the fight entirely. If they wanted to, they could play some high ground games, sit up here. They could try and re-engage if Complexity lose their guard, but... Definitely don't go into the tier two tower uh, fully against the Bat Rider. I think it's an unnecessary. Risk at this point. Evil geniuses still have plenty of things to farm. Oh, he's actually going to be going for a straight up AC. I like it. Um, I mean, when you look at the damage output from complexity, what real threats are there outside of the Deuce and the Jugger? I mean, it's we're not seeing. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's the, the Earth Spirit's just not feeling very scary right now. I mean, it's an Oracle for Oracle, and as you pointed out, he just really isn't accomplishing a whole lot with what damage dealing abilities does have. And then the Batrider burns whatever. Uh, they're, they're tanky enough as a, as a lineup that I don't think we 
Fury's on that. Here we go, Fury. Ready to blink. There's two grouped up, and we just see, yeah, they just have to split up and run back. Very good patience here there. Spindle's looking for a target, blinks into the trees, doesn't find anyone. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have a force staff. He can't really make the initiation. And Swindles next to drop. He's down for 45. Almost no damage done in reprisal. The tier two is certainly going to be the prize claim. Timbersaw is getting so many bloodstone charges now. They, they, I like a little bit of it is maybe um, this Vanguard build. With the Vanguard build, they know that there's not going to be any progression in items for the Juggernaut, most likely. So they're just looking at a single core Dusa going into the late game. So as long as they can establish dominance at this point in time, the 25 to 35 minute mark, uh, I don't even think that they're going to lose late game necessarily. I think they actually still beat that out because the Juggernaut's not a threat. And then you have Timbersaw and Sven who are going to be both very, very farmed and I think will beat out a, a Dusa quite easily. Well, if you toss it back to the draft, man, you know, it's what like we were talking about. It's um, you have an EG squad that's very reliant on blink daggers. Guess what? They got him. They got him pretty quick because they had a great early game. Now you have all this mobility, and Complexity has very little lockdown. I mean, like, outside of Glass over there, yes, then you've got this, and you're going to be able to use this every once in a while. It's basically just an, an oh shit button. And outside of that, yeah. um, you know, now EG just needs a reset. That's that all they got to do, and now you have to fight without that ultimate. And just hope that you don't give up a dumb lasso. If, you, if you're able to do that, your mobility should win the day, given how far you are ahead, if you're EG. I was about to say, was, they, they, Stone Gaze isn't that low, low of a uh, uh, long of a cooldown, but I was, I was waiting for EG to just go right back in there yeah, and try and force that. But uh, they didn't quite see the opportunity. They are going to be able to complete the AC. They can focus on getting the next Aegis in their hands. Um, and then from there, Probably try and push high ground. Again, you you don't want to risk putting um, facing Dusa in the late game, but I mean Dusa's no, farm at this point. Dusa's less farm than the Dark Seer. So like, yeah. I mean, yeah, that that has a partly to do with universe farming the Dark Seer really well. But you're gonna need a bit more than that out of the course. I was gonna ask you, because um, it's certainly beyond my ken. Talk to me about the Vanguard build on the Dark. What's the, the thought process? Here? Why would you? You know, I, I mean, there are the obvious reasons, which is, well, you want more health, you want to be more survivable, but in this particular situation with so much on the line, what do you think predicated the decision to go that direction for Call? I think Chessy wanted to make sure that they were dominant in that 15 to 20 minute marker, uh, like that 10 to 20 where they were moving around. They wanted to make sure they could win fights and take control of the game, and, and Vanguard's probably one of the better early game items like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also something to be said about maybe there isn't going to be enough farm on the map for Juggernaut to be able to, to use like a, a Battle Fury build or something like that, but this does just mean that our Juggernaut is uh, not not that much of a factor. Uh, he's still okay now, but he's going to be less and less so if he doesn't have that kind of uh, Battle the battle Fury farm progression. Uh, sure. Well, going to get caught. If they can get him, this is a good get. Size there. Not sure they can kill him at all. Yeah, they, they, they legitimately didn't touch him. Vacuum wall caught three. Z-Freak bailed out by the Oracle. Don't know it's going to last for long, though, as Hanskin's going to end up dropping. Swindles can do nothing but run for the hills. And they literally couldn't touch him. And now Limp we will get off the stone gaze that will affect fear. Um, he's going to be able to catch him with a bad four seconds. Zide. Yeah, he's yep. got him. And he's going to drain all of that mana. Storm Goodbye. Hammer coming. And he may get two here. There's the two chocolate swap there from PPD. Brings Limp right back into the thick of things. There's the Storm Hammer. Jesse's down next. And my friend, I believe the death rattle, the last gasp of complexity. Might be what we're hearing in our ears aside from a lot of spinning, whirling blades. Double kill for a Sumail. And EG showing why they were the favorite coming in, and they're very well going to be the favorite going out. I, yeah, I mean, I, I thought with that, like, that kind of start and looking at the Dusa, part of it, like, so much of this actually comes back to the their pick of the Juggernaut and how heavily it, it was it was always going to be ineffective, right? We, we talked about it during the draft, the, the fact that he was facing up against three very tanky cores, uh, armor heroes as well. Like, Darkseer has a lot of armor naturally because he picks up mech, and then eventually he's going to get uh, other items he may be able to like the Shivas. The Sven, very tanky from physical damage, has Warcry, is, you know, in this game, has a very early AC in Timbersaw as well, so... Juggernaut was never going to have a good game. And complexity. Basically throwing themselves on the altar of Dota, sacrificing to Lord Gaven and hoping for the best. 
as EG continues to close this one out. Beer, last it back by Swindles. Don't know that it's gonna matter. He still got two down. Here comes Sumail once again from downtown. The long arm of the, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I couldn't remember his uh, actual yeah, war name. Yeah, right. Uh, it's, it starts with an R. Ray Rizzle. Yeah. Rizzle, Rizzle, Rizzle. Like, yeah. like Ashram. Uh, it's not rattle track because that's clockwork. No, exactly. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a good game, as that's called. And Sumail, whatever his, his character name happens to be, ends up with a triple kill and cap. This is the EG that, despite a stumble against complexity earlier today, this is the EG that we've seen throughout most of the best of ones and the EG that ends their run in the best of ones in true form. They just lay it on cold down the stretch, 25 to 10 in a sub 30 minute game. What a performance. What uh, I mean, these these teams persevered, right? Yep. Evil geniuses in secret. They they <laughs> both went through the open qualifier, and they are now going to TI. That is that is really cool because the open qualifier, as well as the regional qualifiers, are are both very tough. Like people can um people can talk about like the American qualifier regional being weak, but the American open qualifier was not. Right, yep. it, it actually um, had pretty tough, and going best of ones, that's a scary, scary outlook. And even if the lower, the even if it's very top heavy, you still had both DC and complexity, both like rather strong teams. And again, in best of ones, you don't know what's going to happen. Yep. So it's all the more impressive that Evil Geniuses were able to make through all of that. And same goes with Secret going through the European qualifier, which is uh, quite the the feat. Quite the feat. <laughs> uh, that's a scary one for sure. So. Uh, props to both those teams, man. Uh, you know, we just as easily could have seen, you know, one of the one of these two teams not making it through the open qualifier, oh, yeah. but they they definitely put in a lot of work, right? right? When they broke apart and they got back together, they put a lot of work to make sure that their game was going to be clean enough to make it through all this best of one hell. Yep, best of one hell. That's a, that's a really nice way to put it, my friend. And uh, best of one hell ends for both these teams. EG, as you said, punches their ticket to Seattle. Complexity down but not out. They're going to be matching up starting again tomorrow as they're looking for a wild card slot along with a few, uh, along with others. So make sure you stay tuned. We're done for today. I'm AC, the guy beside me, sexy as he is. That's Capitalist, and it's been an unbelievable pleasure casting today, casting throughout the qualifier. Uh, we both still got some work to do looking ahead, so in the meantime, make sure you stay tuned to BTS, the variety of streams, all here on the TI6 qualifier coverage, the America's Best of One. Uh, completes, and we can see we actually just got the update there. 5-1, uh, 5-1 five and one, five and one for Complexity were the final standings. They just faced off. Obviously, EG moves on there. And Digital Chaos at 4-2. and two. FDL 3-3. Three and three. Void Boys 3-3. Three and three. Then 1-5 and five and 0-6 oh for the Drunk Boys, Drinking Boys, and Volter. With that, on behalf of myself and, of course, Cap, take it easy, and we'll see you soon.